You may have seen our recent video on why boats float. We made a boat and it floated, but it wasn't very pretty. So we were thrilled to get a chance to see real boats being built at Blue Wave Boats in Seminole, Oklahoma. We got to learn about how some of the best fishing boats in the world are made. These boats are constructed from fiberglass, reinforced at key points, and have a gel coat finish. But the gel coat isn't really a finish. It's the start. When most things get built, like a car for instance, the paint gets put on after it's assembled. These boats get built differently. The boat components are formed using rigid engineered molds and built in layers. First, there's the mold itself, which will get reused over and over again to make more boats. The mold is coated with a very thin layer of a special release agent. This will make the mold easier to take off later. Next, the gel coat layer is added. This is the surface for all the parts of the boat you see and provides the color of the boat. Usually for the interior spaces and the deck, it's white, and multiple color options are available for the exterior. The next layers are fiberglass, which gets set in resin. It's not all put down at once, and in between layers, a quality assurance inspector goes over every inch before work is allowed to proceed. The first layer is a thin skin coat. It bonds to the gel coat and protects the gel coat from the heavier structural layers. Then, reinforcements are added, which you can think of like rebar and concrete. The reinforcements give added strength to key areas and can be things like full-length solid strand fibers or Kevlar. Our impact zone, we impact zone. We're going to see the yellow on the, on the nose, the keel on the transom. A lot of force happens there because of the engine and the torque. Uh, that's why they use Kevlar in those spots. Oh, it's Kevlar. So that's okay. Kevlar. That's why it's a different color. Then a structural fiberglass layer is added with woven fiberglass mats specially cut to the boat's design. All of that is bonded in place with resin and is hand applied and hand rolled. Doing it by hand gives greater control over the thickness which results in a lighter and stronger boat. A lighter boat means fishing in shallower waters and greater fuel economy. Once every layer has fully bonded and cured, they use a crane system and compressed air to pull the part out of the mold. There are four main structures that comprise the main boat body. First is the hole. This is a hole from a model boat. The hull is the watertight outer body of the boat. Part of the hull will be below the waterline, but the hull also includes the sides that stick up out of the water. The vertical part of the hull at the back of the boat is called a transom. It not only needs to hold a heavy engine, it has to sustain heavy thrust forces as the boat is pushed through the water. The CUSA board? CUSA board. C-O-O-S-A. Okay. And the CUSA board is actually what the engine mounts through. Okay. So when you look at this finished hull, and you see that back portion, it's the same thickness as most of the boat. There's no way that that transom could handle the force and the torque of a 400 horsepower engine on it. So what we do is, and this is what all manufacturers do, is they will put uh, a really strong adhesive, and I'll show you some, on the back of that hull, they'll pull that CUSA board really tight to it and let it harden, and then they fiberglass over that CUSA board to tie it into the mold. The next major component is the grid. Our model didn't come with a grid, so we made the sample one out of cardboard. The grid is also known as the stringer system. It performs several functions. The grid gives the boat rigidity and strength. It bonds to the hull, it provides a foundation for the deck, which we'll talk about next. It forms the storage lockers, and it routes plumbing and electrical systems. Blue Wave Boats uses a four-stringer system, meaning there are four beams of support 
that run the length of the boat. That is double the industry standard. This gives added strength and much more surface area for bonding to the hull and to the deck. There are many reasons behind the smooth ride that blue wave boats are known for, but the four stringer system is one of the big ones. Before the deck gets added, structural foam is sprayed into the void places. This foam greatly reduces any chance of sinking because it adds buoyancy. These holes are where they inject yeah. that, okay. that, hot, that uh, closed cell foam, the expanding foam. And what happens is it'll fill those spaces and they'll do it until it shoots out of the holes and then they'll cut it out. And then they'll fill these spaces on the surface with a tube and they'll just chop it down. But I'll show you what that looks like over here. There's a little man Hey, bud. You can walk up this step right here. Hold on to it right here. You climb up there and look. You can see all the closed cell foam. There you go. Don't climb down into it, but the closed cell foam is, uh, The deck we mentioned is the third major structure. The deck is the top surface of the boat and is feature rich to make fishing and all of your time on the boat more comfortable. And you, this is the deck? This yeah. is the deck. Okay. So when you flip this over, this is the deck. So this will become the fishing surface. That's the walk around surface. The console sits in the middle. The leaning post is right here. You see what I'm saying? Top of uh, one of our 2800s. This right here is where they would put the marine head, like the toilet. It would be on the inside of that. So you'll have your console. You'll step. There'll be stairs, and you step down into the into the the bottom of the console, and there'll be the head in there, and it'll have a pump out and stuff. So this is where they put the top deck on top of the, the hull. You can see. Before they put the, the deck on, they begin to do the plumbing and electrical and run stuff through those plumbing lines so that when they begin to put like the console on and they begin to put the, the, the uh, lids on and the boxes and all that, that they don't have to worry about running stuff anymore. It's already all done. So you see it's starting to become a boat. It's a pretty color too. Yeah. So after the, uh, after the top has been put on, after you've married the deck to the hull, uh, then you start having your repair and finishing team come by and check for, if, you, if they didn't properly push the air out when they were putting the, the lamination down, then you can find a hollow spot, you can hear it. Okay. And so you try to find all the little hollow spots. They're called voids. It's where there's a space between the gel and the fiberglass and you don't want to have a space. And so they'll actually knock that hole out and they'll fill it with fiberglass and resin. They'll sand it down to match the, the shape and then they'll gel it sand it, gel it, polish it. And then you never even know. It you was would it. never even know. Yeah. And that's the difference between a handmade thing and a machine-made thing, you know? The fourth major component is the console. The console is actually formed from two molded pieces, an outside and an inside piece. This puts a gel coat surface outside and inside the console access areas. Blue Wave boats fall into three categories. Bay boats, ultra shallow boats that can go in as little as one foot of water, and hybrid boats. Mr. Mark explains the versatility of the hybrid design. Only have maybe up to here with the gunnel. Okay. And when you're hitting big waves and stuff and you're fishing, up here doesn't give you a lot of stability. So up here, you've got the combing pads, and those will hit you like here. Okay. So you can be leaning against the side of the boat, and there's kick, there's kick, uh, toe kick spots too, so your toes can be underneath the, the sidewall. But um, that's where most of the fishing happens here. And that's the difference between a hybrid boat and your typical blue water deep sea boat. Okay. Is that on a deep sea, you'll have high gunnels from front to back. Um, the hybrids will have a space that's kind of got kind of, You want it shallower here so you can run in shallow water so the boat, boat's uh, propellers are not hitting the bottom. So you can get up on plane even in shallow waters. But that up there is deep enough that it can cut deep water. It can cause the water to splash out and not get you all wet. 
while also providing stability for fishing so that you can lean against the side of the gun on the coming head. That one right there is strictly for shallow water where you're not going to have deep swells or waves and so obviously deep. it's less expensive but you don't need to have the water splashing out like this so much because you're not going through and crack crashing through big waves. It has it underneath, it'll still push it out yeah. when you're running, but it doesn't have these big curves up here. With the boat structure assembled, the boat gets moved on to the next phase, where it gets engines, trim, seats, hardware, accessories, and everything else that makes a great boat. And this is where you put in the console, this is where you put in your all your um, lids and boxes, this is where you end up putting in your Garmin units and your stereo and you know if you're going to have a trolling motor they would have all that wired up and you know all the plumbing all the pumps all those things that you still have to install that will all go in here if you've got a head or a toilet they would have that installed here your steering mechanisms and your engines all that stuff happens here so do I take it for each build they'll you've got a yeah, rack so that's what we call the pit kit and so the warehouse will have a kit for our order. The order will drive the bill of material. The bill of material creates a pit kit and the warehouse will go into the inventory and fill all these, these uh, rolling shelving units up. And so it'll have, usually our 28s have three or four, actually four to five of these to, to push out and, and install. Once fully assembled, the boat has an important final step before it's declared complete and ready for the customer. Testing. But we put the boats in the, in the water using the hoist and we sit them in there for 20 or 30 minutes and they'll run the pumps and they'll fill the live, live wells up and they'll make sure that the engine turns over and the, you know they'll make sure that the steering is you know, turning properly. And, so this is where a lot of the system tests happen. Once the system test is done, then they pull it out, they bring it up, they put it back on a rack, and then that's where they would either, if there's not something working, they would check it, make sure that it's working. This space along here on the right side will be called a hospital. So if it's if there's something that wasn't working, they can move it into the hospital. Okay. Um, and then as soon as it's finished in the hospital, or if it didn't need to go to the hospital, and you just line it up here between those yellow lines, the big semi will back in, load them up, gone. I loved seeing how the boats are made. My friend Jake has a blue wave boat, and I love riding, driving, and fishing in it. Jake operates Barefoot Guide Service in North Texas, and his boat rides super smooth. Thanks for following along on our boat building adventure. See you next time.